Well, hello everybody. Uh, this is Greg Bray with Blue Tangerine. Happy to welcome you to our webinar today, talking about how we can use geofencing to help target your customers. We're really excited about this particular topic. We've had a lot of uh, questions about this recently. We've had some clients that have uh, been exploring this opportunity and seeing some great results. And so we're excited to be able to bring you some more information today and, and share uh, kind of some background, what it is, um, how it works, and, and such. So uh, as we as we dive in today, just uh, hello from me. Um, that's my mug. They tell me that if I put that on there, you guys will enjoy the presentation more. So sorry if that's not true, but uh, that's, that's me. I'm Greg. Um, for those of you who are new to Blue Tangerine, just a little bit of background. We do provide uh, website development and digital marketing uh, services and strategies to help you uh, and we are all about helping you build a better website, get more traffic to that website, and of course, get more sales. All right, so what is geofencing or geofencing marketing? Um, <clears throat> this is the idea of trying to determine someone's purchase or, or desired intent related to your products or services based on places that they visit. Um, or, or locations that they uh, frequent. All right, so, so the idea is, is that because someone has, has gone somewhere, and so, um, for example, on, on the screen, you see a map that has some car dealerships, and in a lot of areas, you know, these dealerships tend to kind of cluster in certain, in certain areas, they're near each other. And so if someone is visiting a car dealership, is it reasonable to assume that they may be shopping for a car? Um, and if you are a car dealer and someone is, viewing, is visiting your competitor's dealership, is that someone that you would like to advertise to uh, and put your message in front of at that point? So geofencing is identifying these types of location-based behaviors and then finding ways to share your message with people. All right, so a little more technical here as to how, how it actually works. So you define what we call the fence or the geofence, right? The, the area or location uh, of interest. Um, and a person enters that location. Now when we time, this is, this is drawing it on a map, right? And getting it into the, into the system. Now that person has to have a mobile device with them. Um, and that mobile device needs to have the location services turned on. All right, so now all of you are going to start wondering about your, your own uh, devices. Do I have that on or not, all right? Um, so they go into the fence. They can either have the location services turned on or they can also open up uh, their browser or an app that kind of triggers that. Uh, at that point, the ID of that device gets captured into the system. And, and that ID is now, if, for lack of a better term, you know, I'm just trying to keep this in, what's, they're, they're on the list now uh, of, of someone in, in our uh, interest that we're interested in, in displaying. So once they're on that list, we can now show ads to them. Those ads are displayed through apps that they already use. So these are all the apps on your phone or, or tablet that have advertising already embedded in them. Um, and, and there's a network of, of over 600,000 apps. So again, this is someone who's pulling up the weather or they've got a news app or they're playing Angry Birds or some other game on their phone. And because they have entered into this fence uh, area and gotten uh, captured as, as being someone of interest, now they're gonna start seeing your ads when they're using those apps. Uh, and, and the time frame that they can see those ads can be any point from when they first visit up to 30 days after. Uh, so, and, and that's a kind of a typical campaign is, is 30 days. There, there are some options to do things, you know, shorter or longer depending. Um, but it's not only while they're there that they have to open their phone uh, and, and use that. You have the opportunity to advertise to them over a period of time. So that's, that's the, the audience that we're talking about. This is kind of the idea of how it works. Um, so then as, as you get the ads, the other part of, of geofencing is also defining location-based conversion events. Um, so when we think about 
um, on the on the digital marketing side, we think of a conversion. So maybe on your website, conversion is when someone uh, makes a purchase if you've got an e-commerce site, or it's when someone fills out uh, a, a request information form if you're, um, you know, someone that's that's capturing leads and not finalizing the sale. Um, that's that's kind of a conversion point on a website. But with geofencing, we can actually have conversion points that are also physical locations. So when they visit the competitor's location, we we get them on the list and we show them um, the ads. At that point, maybe they never click on the ad. Maybe they don't do anything, but they come to your location at some point in that 30 days. That's a conversion. Uh, that's uh, an indication that the ad had an influence. Now, of course, is the ad the only thing that maybe got them to come to your location? No, all marketing doesn't exist in a in a vacuum of a single display ad that that influences somebody, right? It's it's a combined thing. So someone shopping for a car, maybe your dealership was already on their list uh, anyway, and they were coming anyway. But it's a way to help us see how many people visited one of the other locations of interest uh, and then came to your location, and we can track that as a conversion. And that's um, the ideal conversion because we're dealing with physical locations. Uh, now, with geofencing, though, it's not just about physical locations. Can you can you also track online conversions still, traditional online conversions? Absolutely. Someone clicks on the ad uh, and, and comes to your site or they make a call. Um, you know, they, they do something else um, on your site that you flagged as a conversion. All of those same types of online conversion points are still incorporated and part of these campaigns as well. Um, again, we're showing them uh, an ad in an app on their phone, and ideally that ad's gonna have some type of uh, invitation or call to action for them to tap it and, and go to your mobile website uh, and, and engage with you that way as well, not just coming to your physical location. So we've got conversion points that are physical, and we've got the digital conversion points as well. So why is geofencing so interesting to everybody? It's very targeted. You know, we're we're now talking about being able to to draw location boundaries of of very small areas um, <clears throat> down to you know single buildings or, or smaller. Um, so now that we can we can target people based on that, you know, it's if you pick the locations properly, you can infer behavioral intent. Uh, why does someone go here to this particular location? You've, of course, you've got the tracking that's all built in. You can measure the the offline conversion. Um, <clears throat> you can uh, therefore target your budgets more effective and, and efficient. It's it's pretty easy comparatively to, to other options to set up. Doesn't take hours and hours to set up. Um, and it, it can be a great complement to your other marketing, both online and offline, helping to see what, what's going on there. All right, so that's kind of the, the idea of what geofencing is. Some important things to make sure we're all on the same page about what it's not. Um, because sometimes these terms get used in, in slightly different ways and, and can mean slightly different things. So, so geofencing is not what we call beacon technology. So beacon technology is when you walk into a store and there's, there's a transmitter in the store that is pushing something at your, at your phone and, and making something uh, pop up. That's different. That's not what this is. Um, there's no push notifications involved with geofencing. So this is not, Somebody walks across the fence and all of a sudden their phone goes crazy and starts dinging and they have to look, right? There's, there's no push going on with this. Um, there's no text messages being sent. Um, this is not text ads. Uh, it's not AdWords. AdWords uses the concept of geofencing or geotargeting is probably a, a better term within AdWords where you are trying to show your ads based on people's location but it's not the same real time type location that we're talking about with geofencing in the mobile and the mobile device. Um, that's more of a, if I, if I know someone's in this particular zip code area, or if I know they're searching for something that's in that particular area, I'm gonna show them an ad. So that's a little bit different what AdWords is doing compared to what we're talking about today. Um, it is display ads, but it's not the Google display network. It's a little bit different. It's not the same as 
a site retargeting where someone who comes to your site is now seeing your ad later. Um, that's, that's a little bit different as well. And of course, it's not billboards. You can certainly use billboards to target people in a particular location, right? That's, that's the, the, the good old traditional <laughs> geo-targeting um, uh, concept is to put the ad on a billboard so people who go to a certain location see the ad. All right, so, uh, but that's not what we're talking about. So hopefully with, by, by defining the negative, it helps us understand the, the concept of the positive just a little bit more. Um, so <clears throat> that's some of the things that geofencing is not. All right, so what are the types of places that you can geofence? And there, there's a lot of different options here, um, a lot of different ways, and some of it depends on the strategy of your campaign and what you're trying to do. Right, so I already mentioned the idea of competitor locations. So if someone is visiting uh, one of your competitors, maybe that's a store, maybe that's a, like a car dealership, maybe it's um, a, a, a new home sales center for the community down the street from yours, you know, what, whatever these locations might be, you can fence those. And, and we always make sure that we, you know, don't include the street so the people just passing by get included. We want people that are going in, right? Um, so you can you can fence those. Your own location. This is something to to target people that that are probably already customers. So that would be a different kind of campaign, wouldn't it? But some type of loyalty campaign. So people who have visited your location, uh, trying to show show them, you know, invitations to come back or or get them on a list for other types of special offers. You know, it can be uh, more generic retail locations. Um, you can do something tied to a particular event uh, or a trade show. I've also got sporting events as kind of a separate thing, but but anyone who is attending this particular event um, may be a target for your particular idea. You know, if you're if you're a personal injury attorney, maybe you want to target uh, the emergency room and draw a fence around the emergency room and and start. Uh, you know, showing ads to people who have visited the emergency room recently. Lots of different flexibility. It's now even possible to do individual households. So um, the idea is, or the phrase is termed addressable geofencing. It's a little different than kind of the, the more standard campaigns that, that we started with, and it's, it's a little bit newer piece. But, but we can take a mailing list, upload that. Um, it connects to property data. Uh, just based on on mailing addresses, and will then take your mailing address and geofence around the individual homes uh, on the mailing list or businesses if it's a business list. And so now we can target very specifically people that are are in those particular locations. And so maybe now you you show ads to your particular you know prospect list, or maybe it's an interest list, or or your customer list. For you know if you're a cataloger, maybe you've got a big big mailing list and you want to try and, and show some particular ads that way. So lots of different ways to slice and dice this. Really the idea is the, where do my prospects, my, my customers, where do they like to go? Um, and, and those become your targets of, of what we can fence. <clears throat> There's a couple of examples we want to share with you. I, I've kind of mentioned the car dealership one because it's kind of here in my in my head from from this particular example um you know the the idea is driving foot traffic that's their goal um and and they also just kind of wanted to, to get a better tracking idea of who had seen their ads and was then coming in right so what they decided to do was to put their fences around competing local dealerships um, they measured the impressions and the clicks on the ads and then they also measured the conversions of actual visits to the dealership. All right. Um, of course, there's reporting that goes with all of this, uh, and, and you can make adjustments as you go based on that reporting. They had a, a click-through rate of 0.14%, which was above the average, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about, about click-through rates here in a second. And in this particular campaign, they were able to link 50 people that visited the dealership after seeing their ads. Um, no. That's for them to decide was that was, is that good or not? It, you know, is, it, it seemed like they were really happy with that particular number, um, but but you're able to track at that level and, and understand that. So another example, um, 
<clears throat> was a home builder uh, who basically wanted uh, awareness for their new community, as well as driving you know foot traffic uh, of potential buyers. So what they did is put the fences around um, competing communities as well as some real estate offices in the area. Again, looking for the intent to buy. Uh, who is who is home shopping? And when they're home shopping, where do they go? Um, and so we we had the, the ad impressions and the clicks to the website that were measured, um, and and they showed that um, over 300 visits to the website from clicking through on the ads, and then they had um, 800 people tracked visiting the community after seeing the ads, the bigger community. Um, so great results on on this particular campaign and trying to uh, get in front of people. Um, who are doing things that in, indicate their intent to buy your product? Where do they go? That's kind of the heart of this whole question. A couple of things to remember. Um, geofencing, it, it is at, at its heart, it's display advertising. Okay, so, so this is not someone who, when they're on their phone, is searching for you or typing in a search. This is someone who's looking at the weather or playing Angry Birds or looking at their stocks or, or whatever app that they're using um, on their phone. So, so display ads in that context are, are never going to have the kind of conversion rates that, um, you know, like a paid search campaign would have uh, because, because it's not as, as my, as the customer, as the user, my, my primary intent is not to, um, to be shopping at that moment, right? Um, also, because of that, that ad message really matters. Doesn't it? And, and so we can have the perfect fences, we can get all the right people, and if our ad message is off, you know, if, if we're putting an offer that has no compelling interest to people, or, or they don't recognize who it is or, or, or what it is that they're uh, looking at, then that can, you know, impact the campaign as well. So we've got to remember, again, display advertising, that ad's going to gonna matter. This is not something where we're recommending drop all your other marketing and do geofencing. This is not the, the end all be all silver bullet. Okay, it, it's part of a larger strategy um, and, and can be really effective, especially as you have that cumulative exposure across your target market. Um, so you've got to be testing. Just like all marketing, you know, do your tests, look at the results. Pay attention to, to are you getting what you want? Should we try a different ad? Should we try a different, you know, location? Um, and, and always be testing. Um, we, we recommend this for, for all types of, of particular marketing, but always be testing. All right, so you're interested in getting started. Where, what are some of the things you need to consider as you, as you get started with, with geofencing? Well, just like all marketing, What's your goal? What are you trying to do? Is it just awareness? Um, are you trying to get someone to come to a particular event that's coming up? Uh, are, are you just, um, you know, what, what is it that you want people to do? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to get them to your website? People, you know, just because you've got a physical location, then maybe the conversion is the website. And, and again, that, that all is driven by what are those goals? Um, who is the audience that you're after? How do you define your customers? Uh, these are not questions that are specific to geofencing. I hope everybody's realizing that. This is, this is just kind of good marketing campaign uh, practice. Now, step three, we start to get a little more geofencing, right? Now, now it's about, okay, now that I know who that audience is, where do they go? What kind of locations are they looking for? Um, <clears throat> what's relevant? And, and we also have to be be careful that we don't get too broad, right? Well, say, oh, well, my my audience loves to shop at the mall. Well, maybe there's a whole bunch of other people that shop at the mall too that aren't in your audience. So geofencing the mall may get us in front of your audience, but it may also put us in front of a whole bunch of irrelevant and kind of kind of spread that budget. So so we want it to be relevant, but also as targeted as possible as we can. All right, so, so we've got that audience. Now, what is it we want them to do? Do we want them to come visit our store? Do we want them to, to click through the website? You know, what are the conversion points? How do we define um, <clears throat> those outcomes that we're after? And then what's the message that's gonna get them to take, take the next step? Um, what's that call to action? Is it some type of special offer? Is it simply just you know, a branding campaign where 
where we need to put our our um, brand in front so that they remember, hey, there's a community down the street from us that might be of interest too that you, maybe you haven't heard of. And it's just about putting that uh, that name in front. And then there's actually display ad design that comes into play here. Once you've got that message, you've got creative that you have to create. Um, and, and in those uh, various uh, sizes and such that, that fit in, in the, the different uh, ad locations. So these are just some of those, those steps to, to help you think about, okay, if, if, if you're gonna call me this afternoon and say, Greg, we're ready to get started, we wanna do geofencing, you know, these are the kinds of questions we're gonna be asking um, and, and need to give it some thought so that you're ready to go uh, with this. All right, so then of course, the big question that, that everyone wants to know, what, what does this cost? You know, what, what do I need to look at from, from a typical cost standpoint? Now, there are lots of different ways to design campaigns and, and there's, you know, this is not a, a one uh, size fits all idea, but these are some, some numbers that can help you plan on what it would take to get started. Um, it's certainly possible to do uh, much larger campaigns and, and, and such here, but typically you're going to have to design some ads. Um, there's, there's seven standard sizes that we recommend. So that, that's going to vary a bit based on what you already have available. Are you doing it in house? Do you need an agency to help with that? Um, you know, and, and, and how, how many versions of the ads do you want to test between some of those things? So there's, there's some, some variance in, in what it takes to add. Campaign setup, kind of our standard campaigns, um, thousand dollars to get them set up. And, and once they're up and running, uh, as a display ad, this is build on an impression. Um, scale. So it's, it's $8.50 for a thousand ad impressions. Uh, now, again, because um, this is a relatively low click through rate compared to some others, uh, you've got to have a big enough campaign or effort to really uh, drive some traffic to make sure you've got a sample that, that will help you really decide if it's working or not. Um, so our minimum display budget recommendation is, is $1,500 per month. Um, now you can spend a lot more than that if, if it makes sense or if you're targeting some really big event, you know, if you were going to um, some, some event that had, you know, hundreds of thousands of people involved for some reason, you know, maybe you need a bigger budget. But, um, but for that $1,500, you're looking at around 176,000 ad impressions. So at that point, we can, we can get some solid data about what's working and what's not. Um, <clears throat> so it's not free to, to run a campaign like this, but it's also not you know, tens of thousands of dollars to get started and test. Um, certainly an opportunity to, to see what's working. Um, now, for the most part, we also recommend that you look at kind of a 90-day time frame for a typical test campaign. Um, it's not required, uh, and if it makes sense for a particular uh, campaign, then, then maybe uh, it doesn't need to be. You know, if you're targeting a trade show that's only – you know, three days long, um, then, then maybe a 90 day campaign doesn't make sense. Um, but, uh, just as you're kind of thinking through what it would take to, to get started with this, these are some of those costs there. So I wanted to make, make that available to you as, as kind of a, a baseline starting point. So you had some ideas on, on getting started. Well, everybody, um, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, if you do have other questions, uh, feel free to, to reach out and contact my contact information is here on the screen. Um, you know, Greg at bluetangerine.com. Uh, we'd love to discuss more specifics about your individual needs and how a geofencing campaign would be a great addition to your, to your marketing. 